I see a lot of people online complaining that these types of cables are worthless and you should just throw away your power supply. And that's something that I really disagree with because most people don't really know the engineering about it. And if you look into it, then it seems fine. So if we have a look at the cable, and for example, this is the 8-pin cable. It has a 6-pin with an extra adapter. There's actually not an extra voltage rule on the extra two pins. It's just to show that it can handle the more power. Uh, the specification says that an 8-pin connector can handle two, uh, 150 watts. And in this case, you have a pigtail with a second cable, and then it should be able to handle 300 watts. If you look at specifications from the maker of these connectors, then it actually changes a little bit. So if I look at specifications from Molex, which is the manufacturer, actually, it's not this type of cable, but they've made these type of cables for a long time. Um, the type of this is a mini fit junior or just a mini fit connector. Uh, so looking at these cables with an 18 wire gauge um, cable connected to it, then they say that the maximum allowed power is about, uh, let's have a look here, it's 7 amps per pin, which comes out to 84 watts per pin. And there are only three pins that have 12 volts on it, and the rest are sense pins or uh, ground pins, and the sense pins are actually doubling as ground pins as well. So if you combine that, then the one 8-pin connector has a rating of 252 watts. The 6-pin connector, strangely, has a rating of 288 watts. And that is mostly to do with the fact that the manufacturer of these connectors actually derates these connectors based on how many pins you have. So the more, the more pins you have on the connector, the less each pin is allowed to have. And this is mostly based because the specification actually doesn't uh, it's not really that the cable is going to break apart if you go over it, but they've just calculated it based on if the whole connector itself rises more than 30 degrees Celsius, then uh, that is the limit for uh, the current rating of these connectors. And this is, the, this is the actual specification. So it's what they allow you to use these connectors for. In reality, you can use them for a lot more power uh, because, well, as you know, manufacturers like to stay safe with these kind of numbers. Because if you give these kind of numbers off, then every company that will use these connectors will go and use these numbers. And they'll use it in varying different types of um, scenarios, old cables, new cables. And especially the, the weak part about these cables is that it, um, uh, the connection is the weakest part. So if you have a bad connection here or you maybe don't have as much wetting current, then um, you can have a lot of resistance and it will heat up and it will melt the plastic and then cause even more resistance. So that is the biggest issue with these cables. And that's also why I think that a lot of new power supply manufacturers have started using these big tail cables because this is a cable from uh, a Corsair thousand watt power supply. It has multiple of these. This is the 2022 model. And then for example, a slightly older one, this is a Seasonic 650 watt Focus Plus Gold. So also quality power supply. It also has a pigtail. I've used this pigtail on a 2080 for a couple of years without any problems. And then going back even further, 13 years ago, this is a cable from 2010. It's from an NMAX 500 watt power supply. And this is actually a bit more robust. So it has a 12 pin connector at the power supply side and then two eight pins on the other side. And these are also the same thickness. So this is all 18 wire gauge. That's the same as these cables are. So why then do new power supplies don't come with these? Well, these cables are kind of overbuilt. Uh, the margins aren't really that big on power supplies, so they're trying to save costs with engineering behind it. No one is going to say that Seasonic makes bad power supplies, and they've designed the cables in a way that will work. Because in the end, having two connectors on a single cable means that you're putting more trust in the cable. And 
I would, I'm okay with putting the truss into the cable because that's not really the point of bricks. It's always the connector. And the connector has shown itself to be quite reliable. And the reason why is that, well, the connector is rated for 250 watts, but we only use this connector for 150. So doubling it, you'll get 300 watts, which means that this cable should be able to handle 300 watts. So I've calculated with um, a voltage drop of 0.6 volt, how much uh, the three 12 volt rails can handle. And calculating it through that, I'm coming to about a 432 watts for the cable for this length. So that's also within spec. It's going to be even more than that because you have more than three ground, uh, you have more than three ground uh, cables coming back. So this is the reason why reputable manufacturers make these cables. And that's also the reason why I think you should not throw away your power supply just because you just have one of these because it will be fine. It's mostly based on the quality of the power supply, which also means that this is a cable for a Focus Plus Gold Seasonic, which is a good power supply. It's a little bit older, which means it cannot handle the transient, even though it's a 650 watt power supply. So I would not use a 3070, 6700 or 6800. So I want to say it's not about the cable, it's about the power supply. And please stop telling people to throw away the power supply to instead of just connecting it up. It's about the power supply. Uh, I will say, however, that having three, uh, having three, uh, three wires for each um, for a 12 volt is not that much. And if you have more than one of these cables, then I would suggest using each cable for each eight pin. So if you have two of these, just don't use this part and then use them as a single eight pin power. If you have this kind of cable, then it's, it doesn't really matter because every single strand here will go to a separate cable, but this cable is expensive to make. So that's why it'll make them anymore. Um, if I compare this to the, the 12 pin, um, the 12 pin 600 watt power, uh, power connector, then something weird happens because if I look up the spec for this cable, it's actually rated to be less than what is in the spec from Intel. So the spec from Intel says 9.2 amps per pin. Uh, and if you compare that to, if you compare it to the eight pin connector and then the spec from that, it says about uh, seven amps per pin. So these are at 9.2 amps per pin, but that is based on the fact that you use a 16, I think a 16 wire gate cable, which is thicker than this. It's quite a bit thicker actually, and it can handle more current. Um, but the weird thing is Intel specifies this as, and they say, well, you should use 16 wire gauge, which is about 1.3 millimeters compared to the 18 here, which is uh, one millimeter diameter. So it's a bit thicker. It has 50% more carrying capacity. Uh, but if you look up at the spec for Molex, then it doesn't show the, um, it doesn't show it's allowed to use 16 wire gates. It is allowed to use for this connector, but not for this. They only have one for 18 wire gauge, which is uh, understandable because the pins are so much smaller. So if you, let's have a look here. If you compare them directly, then you can see they're quite a bit more chunky than the other type of connectors. If you look at the cable, then there is um, six of the pins are for ground and then six of the pins are for uh, 12 volt, which means that you have six pins for the whole 600 watts. And if you compare it to this, in this case, you have three pins for 150 watts. So half the pins and then a quarter. So as you can understand, the, the range that you're going into is actually a lot. Well, the, um, the safety factor is a lot smaller. So if I look at the, the specification from, uh, from Molex for this type of connector, which is called the Microfit, it's smaller, it's, uh, and with 18 wire gauge, uh, let's have a look here. 18 wire gauge, you would have 
uh, let's see, five and a half amps. So that's what they allow. If you look at just the spec for Molex and five and a half amps per pin is not much. If you can buy that for the six pins, you get to 400 watts. So if you would actually buy this connector from Molex, then their spec would say 400 watts compared to this one, where it would say 250 watts. So that's kind of strange. Uh, this is based on 18 wire gauge because they don't have a spec for 16 wire gauge. And I think this is also, I think this is why it looks very rushed. Because if you look at the spec, the spec doesn't say Molex connector. It says, well, here's the drawing for the connector. But the drawing for the connector doesn't actually show the inside part, which is the most vital part that makes the connection. Um, there is quite some difference for the inside part, for example, with materials and with making sure that you make a very good connection. If you use more exotic materials, you make a better connection. And then of course, the more current you pass through these connectors, it also means that if you lose a slight bit of the contact, then you're going to have a lot more resistance and that will heat up the connector a lot more. So if you would use the 8-pin and it's slightly out of spec, or maybe the connector is not really perfectly connecting up, then you would still be fine. And for the 12-pin, if you would do the same, you would not be fine. Uh, so I think it was a bad idea to bring out with this 12-pin. Uh, making it even worse is the fact that the connector is made for 600 watts, but it's actually multiple specs. So this one connector can also handle 450 watts or 300 watts. And the spec is built around that the power supply should tell the, the, the graphics card how much power it can actually handle over the cable. This is the worst idea I've seen in quite some time. It's already quite tricky because a lot of people don't understand how these cables work. And this is pretty simple. 8-pin cable, 150 watts. This cable, for example, cannot actually handle 600 watts. It can only handle 450. But because there's there's an adapter here, there's I don't think there's really very good communication happening over it. Maybe there's something inside of this, maybe like a resistor. I'm not really sure about the connection exactly. But... Someone is going to say, well, I'm going to go from 4080 to a 4090. He has this cable in his computer. He's going to plug it in and it's going to work, but be problematic or it's not going to work. And he's going to be completely confused. That's going to happen when you do these kind of things. I would even say that I would rather just have two 8-pin cable connectors than one 12-pin, even though the specification says that two 8-pin connectors could only handle 300 watts. But if you look at the physical connector, then the connector has three current, ca current carrying connectors for each one. So you have six if you use two 8-pin connectors. And that's the same here. And to be honest, yeah, I think this has a... The current, the current capacity is better on this cable. So to round back to the, the big issue is these big tail cables are fine. It's the, the, um, the worst part about this cable is the connector and the connector can handle a lot more power than you think. The cables, as long as you buy from a, a good power, power supply manufacturer, the cable is also gonna be thick enough and the build of the power supply is going to matter a lot more. If you have more of these cables, so for example, for my 1000 watt power supply, I've got like, I think four or five of these, then I would use multiple of them. But don't feel bad just because you're using these kind of pigtail connectors.